my name is Christiana Faro, and I'm the Education Manager at Creeklands Conservation. Today we're going to take you on a preview of our Powell fourth grade field trip for next year. And today we have a guest with us. Hi, I'm Melissa and I'm with Kelpful and I'm a real life mermaid. My job is to go out into the ocean and gather seaweed and then uh, we sell that as food here locally. So here we have a couple of varieties of edible macroalgae. We have Olva lactuca or sea lettuce. This is one of my favorite varieties. It tastes like lettuce from the sea. Um, so there's three varieties of seaweed or three classes. There's green, red, and brown. And here we have nori. And this is actually the same variety that is used to make the sushi wrappers. Wow. So if you've ever had sushi, you've eaten nori. This is macrocystis, um, and it is also known as giant kelp. This is what makes up the kelp forests out here on our coast, and it grows incredibly fast. It's also deliciously edible, super high in iodine and other trace minerals. And it provides habitat for many, many species here. And remember, they're connected to the bottom by a hold fast. So that's how they connect to a substrate in the water and keep from floating away. Here we have a sea anemone. They have a mouth in the middle and their prey will climb in, they get stuck in the tentacles, and they'll pull it down right into the middle of the mouth. But this is a neat one that we have in the high intertidal. So most of the time when they're higher, you'll find them like this, where they're kind of closed up, and they're closed up waiting for the tide to come back so that they can open up and hunt for prey. When we're tide pulling, we wanna make sure we're being good ocean stewards, so making sure that we're leaving everything the way that we found it. So you don't really wanna overturn rocks, you wanna to try to tread lightly, and if you find an animal, like a sea snail, you can pick it up, take a look at it, and then put it back in the habitat that you found it in. Here we have some coralline algae down below. It's kind of in the water. And this is really important during our food web for abalone. So it's important for their spawning. So here, let's always remember that at the bottom of our food chain, as you guys have learned, we have our primary producers, and that includes all of the algae and seaweeds. This is a variety commonly known as Turkish towel, and it can actually be used as a natural washcloth. It has this sort of scrubby texture to it, and it's really durable. So when you find them washed up on the beach, um, you can take them home and wash them off and then use them as a little washcloth and it's actually really good for your skin. Oh, right there. <laughs> oh man, kelp is um, a foundational species of these ecosystems. So underwater out there, there are entire forests of kelp. Uh, it's, it's like the redwoods of the sea. And it's really important for so many reasons. It sequesters carbon and provides habitat. Um, and as you can see, it has these cool little floats. They're called nematocysts and they're filled with air. And this helps it float. So underwater, it's actually going straight up and down, um, just like a tree in the forest. And we have a bunch of different kelp species down here. And they're really important in the food chain, being the primary producer. And they're a really important um, alternative source of protein for humans as well. just very still and quiet and just observe in the tide pool, you can see hermit crabs and you can see those little claws there. 
If we're lucky, you might come out and crawl around. <laughs> they kind of tickle. Um, and so hermit crabs actually don't make their shells. They borrow them from other creatures who have abandoned them. So as you can see, this shell is exactly the same as the snails. So once a snail dies and abandons its shell, then the hermit crab moves in. Oh, here's a gorgeous anemone. that coming down to the tide pools will inspire you to want to learn more. That's my hope is that this feels like your home and that you're inspired to protect it.